Now let's, let's talk about making actions in droplets a little bit, okay? And, you know, this is, this is something that I threw in because it's usually what, what people really want to know. Actions are awesome. This can start to get into a little bit more advanced Photoshop depending on what you're doing, and I have some examples um, at the end of this, or, or towards the end of the production section where I'll show you um, some more advanced actions that I really like to use. But just to make some simple actions, let's just make a simple action. I'll just put it in my default action folder. So in your actions palette, you have different folders of actions, okay? And then inside those folders, you have the various actions. That's what this is. These are all actions. These are all just default actions that come in Photoshop. And then you can open up the guts of an action to look inside of it to actually see what it's doing. So in this, let's see, let's look at here I have a uh, my, one of my actions in here called a color proof, which we're going to show. You'll see that inside the color proof, the first thing it does is it flattens the image, then it adds portraiture, which is an awesome plugin from Imaginomic. That's imagenomic.com, portraiture. Awesome. I love it. Um, then I can, it goes through and it sets the background, and then you can even look and see if you open up each individual step, what is, act, what is actually happening. So action, or actions are actually a great way to learn Photoshop. You know, if you play an action and it does something awesome to your image and you're like, that is so cool, I have no idea what happened. Open up the action and you can look at, you know, its innermost, deepest parts and see exactly what happened and the exact levels and adjustments that were made. That's what, actually one of the ways that I learned Photoshop is by dissecting actions. So what we're going to do is make one right now. Here's my image and let's just say I want to make a black and white action, okay, something simple. I'm going to go up to my actions palette and go to new action. All right, and I'll just call it simple black and white and name it there. This is the set. It's just going to be in my default actions. I'm going to hit record. As soon as you hit record, understand that everything that you do in Photoshop is being recorded, so now you have to be careful. Um, different ways to apply black and whites. Let's just go up, and we'll just do a grayscale for now. Or no, let's just go to desaturate. Image adjustments desaturate is going to give me a black and white, okay? And let's make, let's throw a curves adjustment in there just to pump it up a little bit. So if I do Command M, I get my curves, and we'll just pop it up a little bit with a little S curve like that, and I'll hit OK. And then I have to remember to hit Stop in my Actions palette. And that's something that I've forgotten to do a couple times, and then you have this gigantic action because it records everything you do later on. So I hit Stop. Now I have a simple black and white action. And that's all it is, just a couple steps. But now, if I want to apply that to a bunch of other images, let's say I open up this image and I was like, oh, I want that to be that black and white action. I just hit play and, my, and then bam. It goes to desaturate and gives it a little curves pop. And that actually, that's a decent little black and white action. Now, let's say I want to apply that or be able to apply that at will, at any time, to any amount of images that I want ever. I'm now going to create a droplet for that and place that droplet on my desktop. That's where I keep my droplets. And I only have a few of them there, but they're droplets that I use all the time. A droplet is a pointer to an action. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that action. I'm going to go to File, Automate, Create Droplet. This dialog box comes up, asks me where I want to save it and what I want to call it. I'm going to call it Simple Black and White. And I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to hit Save. Okay, and this is conferring exa exactly what my action is that I'm doing. The destination, I'm not going to mess with that. That's if you want the images to go somewhere after they're done running the action. I hit OK. And now, on my desktop, you'll see simple black and white droplet shows up. That means if I take these three images, or 30 images, or 300 images, and drag it on that droplet, they all open up in Photoshop, and the action is applied to all of them. Okay. Now, I might look at something like this image and, and be unhappy with that because maybe it's too hot here. Okay. I, just, I can go into my history or I can cl close out of it or whatever. It's not like it's saved. It's, nothing's, been, nothing's permanent or whatever. You can set it up so that it is, but when you do that, I recommend doing it this way. First thing I'm going to do, and this is going to get into some action manipulation for a little bit, I'm now going to copy this action into a different set by holding down Option and just pulling it into any set at random. And it's going to be called simple black and white copy. OK, there it is right there. Now I'm going to add a couple steps to this action. I'm going to add a save as step to this action. OK, so now let's say I wanted to have a bunch of my images that 
turn black, they open up, they turn black and white, and then they get saved to a separate folder so that they're all ready to go, and that's where I can actually leave and have lunch and come back, and then they're all done in this extra separate folder over here. I'm just going to add some steps to that. Okay, so I'll first play the action, and then I'm going to click the last step, and then hit record again. So this, the point here is that you can manipulate actions and, and add steps, take away steps, you know, copy things um, from one action to another. There's all kinds of ways that you can manipulate actions after the fact. That's why I like them. They're really customizable. Um, now I have record hit. I'm going to go to File, Save As. And I have a folder on my desktop that's called Resized. And it's where all my action Save As is go to. Like, Every, every one of these folders in here is a destination from an action that's saving, okay? So if I hit new folder, I can just put simple black and white in here, and then I'm going to save as a JPEG, level 10 JPEG, and then I'm going to close, and these are all being recorded in the action, okay? So now every time, and that's going to show up in this folder under simple black and white, there's the image, it's all saved. I'm going to delete that because I can take now several images and open them up. Let's just do three and open them up. And I can run a batch on all those images. File, automate, batch, open files. That's my source. I can have a source can be a folder I can import, or my source can be anything that's open. And this is my action I'm going to play. I'm going to hit OK. My destination is none because it's built into the action. I hit OK and they're all going to disappear. I can do that to 500 images if I want to. As, if I can mention something quick, yes. the beautiful thing about um, automating things like that is, especially as we've downsized our business, um, we can have employees who do not have Photoshop knowledge do Photoshop. They can be the ones prepping the images. If you have a system where it's real simple and they can just follow, click this, automate batch, our proof action, you know, this gets them ready for the sale. They know where they save in a certain folder. Um, they really don't need to have a lot of knowledge of Photoshop to prep the images. So, so I'm uh, changing this action now to simple black and white save and close. That's the name of that one. And I'm going to actually put it back in that same, old, that same other folder underneath the other one. So now I have two actions that I've created. One of them is just the simple black and white. One of them is a simple black and white save and close. And I can create a droplet for that, too. So if I highlight that and go to File and Automate and Create Droplet, same thing, simple black and white, but I'm going to call it Save and Close on my desktop. Hit OK. Now I have two droplets. One's just the simple black and white, and they're going to, be remain, they're going to remain open in Photoshop so I can continue to edit them afterwards. But if I have a bunch of images, and I just want to throw you know, some sort of effect on them, and then leave, and then come back and have it be done, you know, get it, grab a water or whatever and have it be done, I can set this up here. Or if I have employees and I'm just like, this is part of our workflow. This is the black and white that I want you know, applied on these images. This is the brown tone that I want applied on these images. You can set this up on a workstation. And they don't even need to know, like Vicky said, virtually anything about Photoshop. They need to know how to highlight images or pick certain images, drag them up to a droplet, and let them go, all right? Then throw them on another workstation and have them do data entry or something, you know, while this computer is doing all the work over here, right? Um, or, you know, for you guys that are, you know, for anyone that's doing it all by themselves at home, um, set up these processes and have your computer do the work for you at, you know, 7 o'clock at night rather than 2 o'clock in the morning and go hang out with your family or go to sleep, you know, and wake up the next day and it's done. Um, but the point is, knowing that you can do this, knowing that you can create these actions, that you can create these droplets, that you can, have, you can integrate this into a system that you create in your post-production part of your workflow, that this is the type of stuff that really can maximize your computer's processing power rather than your brain's processing power. You know, use your brain for other stuff like family time or fun time or see a movie or something other than sitting in front of your computer and getting like stressed out and fried for the next day where you have to get up and go through it and shoot all day again. You know? All right. So let's go into the next part. Retouching. Retouching, same thing. We try to automate retouching as much as we can, and that's using portraiture like I was talking about earlier. This is a TIFF. Um, it's a completely lossless, high-res file right out of camera, nothing's been changed on this. Okay, so I'm going to open this up, and we have a proof action, actually several proof actions that we can use. And again, 
it's also worth noting that you can do some of this stuff in Lightroom too with presets and syncing things. It just depends on what you like to do. I like Photoshop a little bit more for certain things because I can do a little bit more with it. It gives me a little bit, uh, I have some abilities in Photoshop that I don't have in Lightroom. But for simple basic stuff, sure, presets work great in Lightroom. Um, and, um, uh, syncing uh, color corrections or color adjustments to a bunch of images work great in Lightroom. Um, you don't, I mean, you don't have to make, making a black and white action and turning it into droplet isn't a really big deal. I just did that to show you that, you know, it's easy to do. Um, but I'll, I'll show you like bigger, more extensive actions later, but just know that it can be done. And if you're doing, if anything's redundant in your process, just think to yourself, this, I should be able to automate this. If I'm doing the same thing over and over again, and it's busy work, I should be able to automate this. There's probably a way that I can automate this. That's the way that your brain can be thinking. And then you can incorporate that into your, into your workflow system on the back end. I would just say that what you're going to show, this is what I already told you guys about yesterday, our proof action that saved us an entire employee's salary. Yeah. Um, and you'll see in a second why. And that's why we wanted to bring image just of a face, because obviously on pets, you don't need a, as much retouching. Obviously, yeah. an owner with a pet, you do. But um, you'll just see why this quickly automates. And um, this is the way we proof, basically. So in my proof action set, there's nine different actions in there. The first three are just resizing actions, you know. So I, I would want this resized. And I would typically do this out of Lightroom as well. But just in case you don't have Lightroom or aren't familiar with Lightroom, I just have actions that will resize this right down to my uh, projector resolution. So that goes from really high res down to like what I was talking about earlier. I don't need to show my client a 30 meg file. I can show them a 700K file, OK, or a 2 meg file in this case. Um, it makes a big difference, especially if you're, running, if you're just doing the same thing on 100 images or 1,000 images. It's going to save you a lot of time. So I've already resized that down. Now I'm going to I have these options. I have color proof with a vignette, color proof without a vignette, black and white proof with and without, brown tone proof with and without. Because brown tones for us are big sellers. It's kind of one of our signature looks, this brown tone that we've created and really perfected in, in, in our Photoshop actions. Um, and it's just kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a big seller. People really like that look for us. OK, so I'm going to do color proof with a vignette. As soon as I play this action, and I'll open it so you can kind of see what's going on over here. I'm going to play this action on this girl. And this is pre-touched, OK? I didn't do anything to the image. All right, and let's say that this occurred to 20 images, 30 images, 400 images. I don't care. But I walked away from my computer, and I came back. And this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looked like after. You can see that it's soft, but her eyes weren't touched. Her eyes weren't affected. Her teeth weren't affected. It's a little diffused. And you can adjust the amount of diffusion within portraiture. You know, it doesn't have to be so strong. Um, but for a senior girl, it works really well, you know. Um, so you can have different versions. You can have, like, stronger or less or less or less. You can have two or three different versions of these as well. But the point is, this is pre-touched, and I can have an employee sit there and run this action on 100 images that, that are getting ready for the client or 50 images that are getting ready for the client. And they don't have to do anything except hit a button, OK, and then put the images in the folder that's ready for the sale, all right? Um, now, that's not, if the client orders this, I'm going to go back to the original file. I'll run an action to kind of get me back to square one where I'm at here, probably without the vignette, because I'll customize the vignette um, in that case. But everything else will be the same. You know, the color will be the same. Um, the the pre-touching will be the same. Because if you go in and zoom in, you can still see that there's some slight blemishes here that I can go in and retouch. But that's a big difference, considering all I did was hit a button. You know, and that's going to be ready for the client to see. They're going to come in, and they're not going to be they're not going to be like too concerned about it. They're just going to know that they look really really nice on that big screen or that monitor or however you sell, right? 